Sandals, shorts, a t-shirt. My hat might look a little tilted, because it is, I'm trying to block the sun. It's warm out here, people. And if you saw last week's video, this is a lot different. Bob was getting snowed on in that video, rained on down in the desert. Hey everyone, James here from NHI. I hope you're all doing well. And um, I'm out here on a personal trip. I'm in the Sonoran Desert. What brings me here is a location that's fairly well known amongst uh, the birding community. It's a spot called the Thrasher Spot, <laughs> aptly named because um, this is a place where you can come and see five species of desert thrashers. So thrashers are in the family Mimidae, and that also includes mockingbirds and catbirds. Interestingly, uh, Mimidae is Latin for mimic, and I haven't had this experience with any of these species here, um, but some members of this family are known to mimic the sounds of their surroundings. Um, and this has to do with the name of Mockingbird. So here at the Thrasher spot, um, this spot's special, this spot's um, unique because there aren't many places where you're able to see this sort of diversity of desert thrasher in one place. You are able to see uh, Crystal Thrasher, Bendire's Thrasher, Lacant's Thrasher, so Lacant is the one that a lot of people come to see, and Curve Build Thrasher. Occasionally you might see a Curve Build. These four um, have been known or do nest and, and maintain territories in this area. Then the fifth Thrasher would be the Sage Thrasher and the sage thrasher only winters here and migrates north to breed. It would be a little overwhelming for me to make a video about all of them, partly because, you know, they're active right now, but they're not by any means like easy to find birds. You know, they're not like starlings sitting on a telephone wire. And I thought that I would focus on what my favorite is right now, and that's the Ben Dyer's thrasher. I was thinking we could go for a walk and try and find some and as we walk I'll talk a little bit more about them so let's go all right people let's go for a walk let's find some thrashers as you can see I sort of lied about it being warm so as the sun gets low this time of year it gets kind of cold so let me show you a glimpse of the lay of the land what this place looks like you know, one of my first impressions of the thrasher spot was you know this is a kind of bleak, uninteresting tract of desert. Um, you know, I would just drive by and not even bat an eye. But uh, lo and behold, this place is infamous for its diversity of thrashers. So I don't think our eyes or our perspectives can often pick up on the, on the magic of the world. Yeah, this scene right here as of now is primarily characterized by creosote bush, which is the Rhea tridentata, an incredibly common desert shrub. Uh, the ground's covered in dried up senescent annuals. And yeah, that's about it for now. Let's keep walking. You know, so there actually is a little bit of truth to what I was saying about the, the bleakness of the landscape. And I'm not talking about from my perspective. I'm talking about from the perspective of a Ben Dyer's Thrasher. So a lot of this barren, low diversity creosote, um, flats, Ben Dyer's aren't too psyched. I'm out here hiking around and what am I looking for then? I'm thinking about the mosaic that this, you know, local landscape is. So you've seen the creosote, what else is there? We have these little islands of a different vegetation structure. And in this place's case, that looks like um, creosote, but it also includes um, another, can another canopy above the creosote of mesquite, Prosopis valutina, and occasionally around here there's Palo Verde, uh, Parkinsonia, Microphylla. 
check out this awesome drone footage that Micah Regner, my friend and friend of the NHI, shared with me today. This video is taken near by where I am at now. You'll notice an ephemeral waterway laden with denser vegetation juxtaposed to a sparser vegetation structure in the uplands surrounding it. And this provides a great depiction of um, a, a landscape mosaic that I'm referring to. So this vegetation structure is important to Ben Dyer's thrashers because it, it creates opportunities for um, different types of cover. Um, it provides nesting opportunities that you know aren't so great out here in the creosote. Um, provides an opportunity to get up high and get a bird's eye, bird's eye view, if you will. Uh, you know, thrashers don't spend too much time flying. So let's talk about migration for a second. Where I'm at here in South Central Arizona, at this location, Ben Dyers are known to be migrants and residents. So some are here holding down their territory all year long and others are flying in from the south to breed. So that's here. 50% of breeding records in the state of Arizona are within Sonoran Desert Scrub. And that's a lot. But what about the other 50%? Where else are they going? So, shout out to the Mogollon Highlands, but Ben Dyers don't really, at least in the records, seem to nest and breed in the highlands too often. However, they do pass through the highlands and head further north onto the Colorado Plateau and establish territories and breed during the breeding season. And really generally, yeah, the Four Corners region. And then they'll head back south for the winter. Y'all probably can't hear it, but I can hear Ben Dyer singing it's sweet, soulful song off in the distance. So I'm gonna go see if I can find it. I've come to uh, this mesquite here. Wait, um, yeah, this one right here. And there are two thrashers in this tree singing. So, all right, so here's the scene without me. And I'll zoom in a bit. You can definitely make them out. And actually right now it's looking like there are three birds up there. Two of them are thrashers. I'm inferring that this is a mated pair and they're singing right now. I don't know if you can hear them, um, but what they're doing right now, if they are indeed mated, um, they're singing to announce their territory to others of their same species. As I was zooming in on this thrasher, the other thrasher drop down out of the tree out of sight but this one's still here singing now that we're zoomed in you'll be able to see a little more of the characteristics of ben dyer's thrasher you'll notice it's dusty brown it's got a long tail that hangs below it in the tree it's got a slightly curved bill bill's not as long as other thrashers here in the desert So maybe some of you are familiar with the expression that in the desert, plants grow by the inch, but they die by the foot. And what that's really getting at is it's a hard life out here. And that's not just for plants, that's for all walks of life. So as a result, species have evolved pretty incredible um, adaptations to deal with the inherent hardships which result from this pretty extreme environment. I know from literature and from observation that these birds are far and few in between and you know one could hypothesize that that's an attempt to maintain distance between their intraspecific or same species relationships to um, probably help like partition resources it's kind of hard to find and that's how they like it but i'm saying all this because i wanted to let you all know that these birds are in decline so the north american Breeding Bird Survey found that from the year 1968, that's a long time ago, from 68 to 2015, um, every year, Ben Dyer's thrasher population in North America dropped by 4%. That's 86% of their population has been lost during that time frame. 
and these birds continue to decline um, to this day. And that, that's really largely a result of development and habitat fragmentation, destruction of their habitat. Oh. So this is sort of an improv kind of situation here. I'm out here and just thought this was interesting. I think these are really cool birds, so I thought we could make a little video out of it. Um, yeah, really just a species account for you. But as I was walking back, I got thinking, you know, a lot of our videos are kind of geared around helping you maybe uh, improve or add to your, your natural history practice. And, you know, take this as an example, um, you know, really thinking about the landscape that you're moving through as a mosaic. So here we saw Ben Dyer's like a certain tile <laughs> of the mosaic and um, that's where I'd be more likely to find them. So this might help you kind of hone in on species you might be looking for uh, by using this, this framework. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming along. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, uh, you, can make, you can make Bob's day by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You make my day too. Thanks you all, have a good one. Mm -hmm.